Seriously, Doug, that's your plan for this week's episode? Yeah? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll just repeat it out loud to you so you can hear it with your own ears, and maybe you'll think, hey, maybe that's insane. You want to, A, shoot a bullet at me, and B, you want me to cut that bullet in half with a katana. Yes, I do. Then I'd like to follow that up with just one question. In what imaginary universe do I say yes to this? Oh, that's easy. I'm not asking. One. Wow, I can't believe you did it. Best two out of three. One. One, two, three. Listen. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learn, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And let's cut to the chase. See what I did there? Thanks to these requests. So, a whole bunch of you have asked for a bullet slice effect from Deadpool 2. And crazily enough, that's what we're doing today, guys. Now, in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor, pretending to cut a bullet with whatever you've got on hand. I actually had a katana, so I used that. But feel free to use whatever you like. Now, guys, you do have two options when you do shoot this. You can shoot it in slow motion if your camera is capable of that, or you can just do what I did. I actually shot this at a higher shutter speed. I usually shoot it around 60. I shot this one at 120, and it just eliminates a lot of the motion blur you might see. But I'll talk about that a little bit more once we jump into the tutorial. Now you also need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and grab the Deadpool 2 effects pack, which contains our bullet animation and a spark asset from actionvfx.com. Now this spark asset is only 720p. The guys have very generously allowed me to give you one from their spark hits collection. But if you do want a higher res spark asset, head to actionvfx.com and grab that today. They are in massive resolution and they're just damn pretty. And if you do, make sure you use the discount code FILMLEARNER and you get 10% off your purchase. Win-win. And also, before we get into this, I keep hearing you guys say, Hey Grant, that's a really nice shirt. Where did you get that? Well, funnily enough, thank you for asking. I actually designed this shirt and it's in the Film Learner merch shop right now. You can click the link right up here and check it out for yourself. And before anyone else mentions it, yes, you can see my nipples poking through my shirt and I'm sure that's going to end up in the comments down below. Bring it on. Let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my shot set up in a comp and ready to go. Now if we check out a preview, you can see that I've shot this at 24 frames per second, which is standard frame rate. But what we want is a little bit of slow motion. So the easiest way to do that is to right click on the clip right here, head up to time and hit time stretch. Now all I want to do is just slow this down around 25%. So I'm going to type in 125. You can see that the time increases down here from around one second to around two seconds. Now if we check out a preview, it's looking a bit more like slow motion. As I mentioned earlier, having a higher shutter speed if you're shooting on a DSLR will help as well to minimize motion blur, but it will require more light, so make sure you consider that. Okay, let's move on. So you can see over here I have our spark asset as well as our bullet animation. Both of these are available in our download pack. Now I will mention once again that I'm using a 4K Spark Asset in this tutorial right now. And the download pack contains a 720p demo version. If you'd like to upgrade that, make sure you hit up actionvfx.com and use the code FILMLEARNEN to receive 10% off your order. That's enough whoring, let's get back to it. Now our first step here is to drop our board animation into a comp like so. Now our next step is to add some motion blur. But since I'm not much of a fan of the pixel motion blur in After Effects, I find its results on fast moving objects kinda crap. So I'm gonna cheat. So with our animation selected, let's head to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and grab Radial Blur. We'll then set that to around 15 and set it to zoom. You can see instantly, we very much have a look like motion blur without all those hefty render times. From there, we want to temper this blur amount out a little when the bullet breaks apart. I think it's a bit much and then we lose a lot of detail. To do that, let's scrub along the timeline to just before the bullet breaks, right here, and let's hit the stopwatch on blur amount. We'll then skip ahead roughly 10 to 12 frames and then we'll halve that to 7.5. That way we have some blur, but not too much. That said, play around gang until you're happy. Next, let's add our spark hit. So let's firstly scrub along the timeline until we see the bullet break right here. Now me personally, I'm going to trim a few frames from the start of the spark before I add it, as our slice is pretty sudden, 
and there's too many lead up frames that kind of lessen the effect. Now that I've trimmed it, let's add it to our comp at the breaking point here. We'll change the transfer mode to screen and position it into place. I might also hit R and rotate mine. Mm, 24 degrees seems about right. Next, let's scale it down a bit. Once again, guys, mine is 4K, so it's coming down to around 45%. That way it doesn't overpower the bullet braking, but just have a play with the 720p version and see if you have to scale it down, if at all. If we check out a preview, it's starting to take shape. But I wanna add one more thing. Our spark here is quite bright, so it should be giving some light fall off to our bullet. So I'm going to add that light fall off. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate our bullet animation, trim this layer to begin after the break. Here is good. From there, let's head up to effect, color correction and add exposure. I'm gonna crank this up to around 2.5 or so. That way we get some hot spots on our bullet. Now to avoid this looking too harsh, let's also head up and add a fast box blur right here as well. I'm gonna set this to around two and that way we just have a bit of subtle glow. Last step, head to the first frame of this layer right here, hit T to bring up opacity and then let's hit the stopwatch right here. Head a few frames forward until our spark is completely subsided and then let's crank the opacity down to zero. This will leave our bullet with a burst of light fall off until the spark subsides and then it'll just go away. Okay, last steps gang. I'm gonna duplicate our spark asset, head up to effect, blur and sharpen and add a fast blur. I'll crank that up to around say 90 and that'll give us a nice glow there as well. The final thing I'll do with the spark asset here is head to color correction and add a tint. It's a bit too saturated and I think a tint of around 42 will lessen that greatly. Now, make sure we also copy that tint and add it to our glow layer above as well. Nice. That's our bullet comp all done, guys. Let's then head back to our actor because it's time to drop this into our shot. Now, it's at this point that we'll need to do a little bit of back and forth action, gang. Now, what I mean by that is we need to move the animation clip around a bit on the timeline to match up with the timing of our actor. You can see at this point, my sword is in the optimal position. So this is where we need our first frame of spark to be. So with a little bit of finesse and a little bit of wiggling back and forth, there we go. Let's check out a preview. Nice, the timing looks great. Now one thing one of you mentioned in the teaser, just down in the comment section, was that the bullet needed a little color grading to match the scene a bit better. So let's attempt to blend it a little bit now. So we can see that by my skin, we've got a decent amount of yellow light in our scene. And that's mainly due to the studio roof lights being some cheap bulbs that I grabbed at the supermarket. So let's add a little bit of that yellow into our bullet. Now I'm gonna go cheap and nasty and head to effect, color correction, and add photo filter. From the drop down menu, I'm just gonna grab plain old yellow. That actually looks better. Now someone also said that they thought the bullet was too bright, but I kinda like the brightness. So I'm just gonna move on to the next step, but I will say guys, be sure and play around with the color correction and the brightness and exposure, all of those until you're happy with the way that the bullet blends into your shot. Now guys, this is looking pretty good, but I have one last cherry on top. As you can see on the other side of me, I have an arcade screen that clearly has a reflection. So I'm gonna quickly duplicate our bullet slice and from there, I'm gonna move the position up slightly and then I'm gonna grab the pen tool and draw a quick mask around the shape of our screen right here. Now the last step here is to hit T and bust the opacity down to around 40% or so. Now, when the bullet fragment goes past the screen, you can see a subtle little reflection there as it falls. Not essential by any means, but it does help sell the illusion that the bullet is in the shot. Now, one other cherry on top, gang, and I'm sorry I did say the last one was the last one, but this is definitely the last one, and that's adding a bit of light fall off to the actual footage itself when that spark occurs. Now, to do that is pretty simple. We're just gonna head up, add an adjustment layer, and make sure it's just above our footage and nothing else. From there, we're gonna head up, grab the pen tool, and draw a rough mask around the area where that spark actually hits, and then we'll hit F and feather that out around 80 pixels. From there, we'll trim this layer to start when the spark first comes out, right there. 
There we go. And then we'll head up to Effect, Color Correction, and Grab Exposure. Now I'm just going to crank this up a little bit just so we can see a little bit of a hotspot. This looks pretty good. And just like with the exposure animation we did on our bullet, we're also going to hit T right at the start, hit the stopwatch on opacity, head to the end of the spark, and then we're just going to crank that down to zero. That way we also get a bright flash of light fall off on our actor as well as the bullet. And if we check out one final preview, that my friends is our Deadpool 2 bullet slice effect. Mm, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. So guys, that's my take on the Deadpool 2 bullet. Dex is just working up. So guys, that's my take on the Deadpool 2 bullet slice effect. As you can see, it's really easy to put together once someone's gone and done the 3D simulation of the bullet going into the screen and cutting it in half. You're welcome. Now, of course, guys, we have a whole lot more Deadpool 2 effects coming up. I actually shot some stuff with Dexter the other day, which in some way may feature his baby legs. Hint, hint. But for now, that is my time. If you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit that subscribe button and join the over 100,000 that have already done so and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've also got two other episodes of film learning right over here as well as my Patreon info right here if you want to support the channel and get some awesome rewards. My social media crap is above my head. And until I see you again, guys, keep learning.